real? You want to hold my phone? I will ask you for it in a second. <laughs> Are you okay with this responsibility? Uh, you can be fine. We will Jasmine, I need you. <laughs> okay. Hi! Hi! <laughs> How are we all? Good day! Yeah. Yeah. I'm so happy to be back. This is where I love to be. This is my other job. This is my dream. This is everything. I hope you enjoy my stuff. So I've got a mix of old and new. It's going to be exciting. So I'm going to start off with a favourite of the lovely Gareth and Addy um, that I did last year and I hope everyone likes. It's called Sommelier. Yes. A long time ago, in a land far, far away, I fell in love with a sommelier. Let's set the scene. I am sat indulging in a fantastic meal with my nearest and dearest. The food is exquisite, but I'm not quite satisfied. I call for the waiter, and I ask for a wine suggestion. I'll send you our sommelier, he said. And then, by my side, whispering in my ear, is the most handsome man I've ever seen. He is the true servant of Dionysius, and baby, I would pray with him every day. His eyes are as dark as the grace grapes he worships, almost like a merlot. And his hair is as light as a glass of dawn on a summer afternoon. He grins, takes the wineless from me, and says, Might I suggest my number? Priority filling. Looks good. Keep going. As does he. <laughs> and, Pause. and then started our wonderful relationship. In candlelit bars and dusty cellars, we mentored into each other's tannins, and he called me his full-bodied red. Our love matured, the sex became more fruity and more vibrant. He asked for more situations, eventually said, I found us a quite a good pairing. And this is where our relationship soured. He introduced me to Rosé. She was young and fresh and sweet on his palate. She walked with hints of peach and vanilla. So he left me to turn to vinegar. So, I will always remember my time with my excellent sommelier. I think of him when I have a drink, or oh, ten. <laughs> so when a recipe calls for a glass, I add a bottle. <laughs> so this is a new one. And yeah, I'm just not going to introduce it. Let's see how it goes. It's called Grass. I'm in the habit of making bad decisions. I can't stop making mistakes. I don't think before I act anymore. My conscience and my impulses are in a bitter feud. I keep making bad decisions, and I don't want that night to be one. I don't want to be his mistake. I think I'm a bad decision. He smiles. I'm jelly. He laughs. I'm slime. He flirts. I'm his. And this is how we were, flirting friends who took the line as a suggestion, whose joke and fake fights made me look like more. I could talk, uh, I could talk about what makes me launt him, but I'd be a shit poem. I could talk about how he makes me laugh, how his pillowy lips look, or how he can chat shit for days. How he, when he pisses me off, I want him more. How when he hugs me, I don't want him to stop, or his dumb, cute, silly tattoo. But I want, I want. Except for his eyes. The eyes he hates. The eyes he doesn't want me to look in. The eyes he wants me to change. I wouldn't change for the world. Those gorgeous brown eyes, they make me weak. They make my morals scared. They're perfect. I'd tell him every day if I could. They burned in the street light. They glistened in the dark of that night. I think I'm a bad decision. He bought me wine, I bought him cocktails. His hands on my waist, his fin my fingers in his hair. He took a picture, my face. Apparently that's what started it all. We shared drinks, we held hands, we played pool, we flirted, we entwined fingers, we lost, we flirted. He grabbed my ass and he held me tight. He kissed me, I looked deep in his eyes, he grabbed me when I asked him. We went for a smoke. We went for a smoke that lasted three hours. I think I'm a bad decision. He tasted of cigarettes and frustration. I kept myself close and open to him. Having chemistry is a cliche, but I scratched the periodic table into his back and his, had the elements on the tip of his tongue. The passion was there and vibrant. 
It felt like the fumblings of teenage hormones again, when you can't stop and it runs away from you like a car without brakes into rush hour. And I felt young and stupid again. He felt strong and dominating. He took me into a dark alley. He picked me up, he had his hands on my throat. He kissed me with all the kisses we'd missed over the past three years. And he put his hands on my cunts over tights and I put my hands over his cock over jeans. And I felt like a silly little girl again, letting him show me what to do. I think I'm a bad decision. We stopped. We calmed down. We sat and smoked and kissed. We talked about everything and nothing. He whispered filthy somethings in my ear like we could have been getting high and fucking and let me lick your bumhole in the salad. <laughs> <laughs> Not all romantic, I admit. But he was saying everything I wanted to hear glide out of those lips. But he didn't want to go home with me. We both knew we couldn't. We both knew it would be a bad idea. We both agreed we should be more than that. So he walked me to a taxi. And he walked home with a raging hard on. He walked home with soaked pants. He walked home to her. I think I'm a bad decision. He wasn't mine to kiss. He wasn't mine to touch. He wasn't mine to want. He was hers. Now we act the same and pretend nothing happened. I don't know if he can remember or if he doesn't want to, but all I want to do is kiss him and talk to him. But I can't tell. No, I can tell he doesn't. He won't look at me. I think he's changed his mind. I think he regrets the words he whispered. I think he regrets that night. I think he regrets me. You don't even look me in the eye. That's all I want to do is look in those empowering eyes and he won't let me. And it kills me a little bit every day. I miss him even though he's there. I miss the kisses I shouldn't remember. I miss the ignorance. I miss his eyes. I know I'm about to see him. and she writes numbers like they were the words of the world because she's got the blood of Byron in her but her parents, they won't let it out they won't let her scream and shout poetical and says she writes mathematical, analytical and did you know she pretty much invented the first computer and you hardly fucking knew her yeah, Mr. Churin, he made his machine in the 40s but the thoughts and the algorithms were hers and they inspired his because 200 years back, Ada, she sits and she dreams of a massive calculator made of steam let's backtrack a few years Little Miss Ada, she, she grew up wanting wings. Her imagination took her on adventures with flying things. She used her days creating machines to make her soar, but her intelligence was destined for something much more. One day she was invited to a soiree, but Ada didn't know what to do or what to say until she was tr shown something truly amazing. It was Charles Babbage's difference engine. Babbage had known Ada since childhood, and from then on they used washers and cogs for the greater good. They would stay strong friends for many years and relish in each other's plans and ideas. Babbage would always celebrate his calculating fairy, but life got in the way of their machine coming to be. See, they had plans and were eager to finish, but poor Ada's health began to diminish. All her life, men said, her body cannot handle the maths. Her female frame was not built to last. The science would break her brain beyond mending, but it was her brain that stayed with her till the very ending. Even Florence Nightingale, no word of a lie, said it was her brain that would not let her die. But she did. It was cancer up to its usual disgusting tricks, and she passed away at the age of 36. But it's not just her gorgeous brain that ins inspires me. No, she lived the life of a woman I want to be. I think it's all the sex she had that's the interesting part. Because she's a girl who's after my own heart. 
She fucked her tutor at the age of 16 and nearly eloped, but her mother stopped that before the ending she hoped. She married at 19 and became the lady of love legs. She still had affair after affair all over the place. This girl also loved to gamble, oh you bet. Though throughout her life she racked up a hell of a debt. Whether it was cards or roulette, nobody can say, but by fuck did this girl love to play. So it wasn't her dainty lady of the time. She's too coarse and vulgar to have followed that line. It sucks that I didn't get to meet her, if it's anything, just to see if she was such a shitty dresser. So yes, I'm inspired by her wild soul. Her unending imagination is set my goals. I know my intelligence can never be on par, but Ava gives me the desire to go far. I'm going to try and be like this incredible woman in any way I can. And just remember, 200 years back, Ada, she sits and she dreams of a massive calculator made of steam. <laughs>